Part five, time to add some guitar. So jump right in, create a new track, title it up, and we are going to need a tuner. Make sure that we are in 444 hertz. So record arm, set it in. There's our sound. And uh, tuner here lets us change it to 444, which is perfect. And I'm using a drop down whole step tuning on a PRS SE Custom 7 string. So. I uh, made sure I was already in tune there. Just double checking. And let's also set our uh, reduced latency when monitoring option so that we don't get too much latency, hopefully. Got a lot of stuff in this session, but uh, throw in some amplitude. And I'm going to be using the Fender Twin Reverb based on the 65 model right here. Great, great amp. Wish I owned the real one, but I don't. And if you couple it up with the Tube Screamer, which uh, here's a replica of it, sounds really great. Also going to throw on a um, tape echo rack effect, set it to eighth notes. And um, I, I like the rack effects better than the stomp effects, so just uh, using these instead. With the reverb here as well, nice and lush. Let me turn that down a bit. And let's do some guitar. So set my metronome up. Oh yeah, and also buffer size. If it's too high, we'll definitely get latency. So I'm gonna try to lower it here and see if it it works. All right. I'm still getting quite a bit of latency, even though it's 64 samples. But uh, I'll see what I can do. I'm gonna try to play the notes a little bit ahead of time. Maybe that'll help me and then I can quantize it later, but we'll give it a shot. Let's see. Yeah, man, so unfortunately, I am gonna have to turn off the video capturing software just to help with uh, reducing the latency. I told you my computer sucked. I need a new one, I know. But uh, yeah, so this next part I'm gonna have to do off camera. Uh, another option is I could just mix down this portion and then open up a new session in the same tempo and just record over that. But I, I just think for our purposes right now, it's just easier if I uh, go off cam, do it real quick and then come back. So uh, as Arnold says, I'll be back. Hey, that was fast. So check it out. Bam. Got it recorded. Let me just uh, bring my buffer size back up here. Even at 64 samples with that video capturing software is just too much, man. So sorry for having to go off cam. But check this out. We uh, highlight the sample. We hit Command I. It makes these little markers for us. And we can quantize the audio. So I'm going to quantize it to 16th. I'm going to set my warp mode to complex pro which in this case is going to sound better and quantize the audio which is one of the reasons why i love doing this in ableton um real quick trick you just highlight command i create the inserts you highlight it again shift command u quantize to whatever section you need 16ths eighths whatever and uh there you go man luckily this guitar part's pretty simple so it quantizes very well um, faster parts can be a little bit more difficult, but really handy, man. Definitely, definitely up there with some of the best audio quantization I've ever heard. Um, so while I was off cam, I actually got a notification on Twitter about, uh, apparently this is today, uh, April 3rd is the 20th anniversary of Terrence McKenna, his passing, and, um, he was a big influence on me, and I definitely, uh, Definitely wanted to include something to honor him right here. Terrence McKenna, shout out to the man right there. And, you know, he's he's always been sampled by a lot of people. I've always loved his voice. I figured, you know, why not, why not, you know, honor him here and do some uh do some cool um samples. So I went online, 
you know, during that little break and I started checking out some stuff and I actually found a, uh, a video that uh, is perfect for what we're doing here. And lucky for us, it is Creative Commons, which allows me to reuse it. Uh, the idea being, you see, that each epoch being shorter than the one that preceded it, this generates an asymptotic curve of approach. And the, it's become a cliche of our culture that time is speeding up. It actually is speeding up. It's not that. So that's the part that caught my attention right there. It's coincidentally, uh, we are making time speed up here. So we had the uh, ticking clocks on uh, from part two, and um, they're set in fives, just like five seconds. Um, you know, five times twelve seconds. How we set up our clocks, and we have it constantly speeding up. So that caught my attention. That is just extremely coincidental. You know, and then on top of that, you know, I get this notification. So I thought it was perfect. Um, and so we're going to use it. We're going to do this. Uh, I'm going to kind of switch gears on us here. I did want to add more guitar, but it's going to be tough. So um, maybe that'll be for the next episode. We'll see if we can figure out this latency issue. For now, I actually have a sample that I, I took that video, bounced it down, um, chopped it up, kind of took the parts that I wanted, rearranged it. And did some stuff um, that I don't really want to bore you with. I mean, it's pretty simple rearranging stuff. But uh, yeah, definitely when you reinsert a sample here, you want to make sure that your warp mode is in the correct tempo. And uh, I'm going to use texture mode, which is going to serve our purposes a little better here. Because I'm going to affect the pitch of uh, this sample in really weird ways. Um, kind of make it sound very alienish. A lot of people, you know use Mr. McKenna's voice here to do some crazy like uh, alien samples anyways so um so we can get certain problems under control, there he is but it seems certain problems are there's the man himself control we are not the only force for disruption and chaos. Man, it's such it's such a cool voice man it's such a cool a voice to sample epoch so being sh you know I I just I gotta I gotta do this man and then especially with what today is marking the 20th anniversary of his passing like so we're gonna do this so I'm gonna double it up we're gonna group the tracks um, one of them is gonna be kind of like the I'm gonna keep it like the same pitch or whatever and the other one we're gonna completely just warp out and just do crazy stuff with it so check this out um, in this case since I have it on a group track I'm gonna just do a, a clean fade in using the uh, group and I can also I can alter the, the volume on the individual tracks later if I need to. Um, so that's cool. We got our fade in right there. It's gonna drop in right when the drums kick in. And for this first portion, I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch it up uh, a little An bit. Unstable place. Each epoch. There we go. Now we're starting to get some alienish sounds. And. Um, Next, on this top one, I'm going to actually do some uh, uh, automation using this clip. Um, these clip automations, this transposition, which is the pitch. And um, just going to kind of go up and down like in a sine wave fashion with the pitch. Oops. And uh, if you hit B on your keyboard, you've got this little pencil tool that you can just draw stuff with. So... Um, and then if you hit Command One, Command Two, or Command, uh, yeah, Command One, Command Two, you can alter the, um, uh, make it um, smaller timing or larger timing. So we're just gonna do sine wave up and down um, throughout the track here, and his his voice is gonna be pitched in, uh, you know, in a raising and falling fashion, which is gonna sound really, really cool, um, especially with with, in particularly like the way that he's speaking in this um, speech, very eerie. He's talking about like the end of the world and stuff, which to me, this song kind of gave me like that feel anyways, like it's the end of time or time is like speeding up and it, it reaches a point of, you know, coalescence where it's, where it's one again. We are being drawn into confrontation. Being shorter than the one that preceded it, this generates an asymptotic turn of approach. It's become a cliche of our culture. The time is speeding up. It actually is speeding up. 
almost kind of like some spongly stuff you know um so i'm gonna go back and change that a little bit later for now i do want to add uh some more effects i'm gonna put some um um, a redux here to kind of almost make it sound like as it's progressing towards that um, breakdown at the three minute point like like time itself is breaking down like his voice is it's going to start breaking up I mean, and distorting. you're just as dead even if you're not so i'm going to do a um <clears throat> i'm going to fade in this redux um plug in all the way up from where the drums start to where they stop and uh, I have the down sample setting set to soft because if you put it to hard, it's it's almost too much. Like it really breaks down the, like it almost distorts it too much. So for like a voice sample, the soft is definitely a lot better, uh, a lot easier to use. Matter of fact, it's still even sometimes too harsh. So um, so we'll check it out here. Just do a, a just a straight fade. It's very hard to believe that you should not. Okay, so yeah, either way, even with the soft setting, it's still too hard. So what I like to do sometimes is I'll just group it. And um, this will kind of give me like a wet to dry. So I can create two chains. One chain will be the, the wet effect. And the, the second chain will be the dry. So in a way that can be kind of like a, you know, you can use groups to make um, a mix. Um, make a wet to dry ratio, basically. So I'm going to lower the uh, effect and I'm going to keep the dry up. And that should sit, make it sound a little better. It's very hard to believe that we could manage ourselves back into a steady state. What about the global population curve? What about the degrade? All right, much better, much better. Um, then we're gonna need some reverbs for sure. Need some reverbs, revoibs. Um, I'll just mess with the settings here. Give it a long decay. Um, the degrading atmosphere. I mean, you're just as dead even get it. if you're not. Long decay. Ah, it's a whole two minutes of decay. The degrading atmosphere crisis that we can. And there is the physical evidence all around us that we are the witnesses. All right. to also, I think some echo would be nice. That we cannot control it's very hard to believe that we could manage ourselves back into a steady All right, let me try to add the echo only to the redux. No, actually, I like it on the whole mix better. Okay, so yeah, we'll... We got we got a nice little reverb and echo. Okay, another thing I wanted to do um, was copy this uh, looperator. Um, if I could just make it a bus, I would. But the way that we have it set up right now, it's it's not practical. So I'm gonna just copy it over into the channel itself, and then um, I have to uh, make. A duplicate of the MIDI information that we had since it's not being bus it's on its own separate thing and then I'm gonna have to uh, send it to the vocal group as opposed to uh, well yeah so it's a duplicate so it's not gonna be going to the, um, the stylus since we already have it so I'm gonna I'm gonna send this loop rater MIDI information duplicate to the uh, vocal group and then now we got kind of the same effect as the drums but on the vocals. So if you saw, I believe it was um, part three in the series, um, you can watch how we did that. I'm just copying it over for now since it's already set to go and then plus it's going to keep both things in sync. It'll keep all the drum effects in sync with the vocal effects and kind of emphasize each other. And um, from here, now I just gotta finish off these. Uh, I gotta finish off these pitch changes. I was, I'm feeling like the they're a little too high and low in pitch, so I'm gonna try to keep it kind of between like a plus nine, minus nine range. Uh, I feel like when you start going plus twelve, it's kind of too high and too low in pitch. So let me alter this up a little bit, get a little bit more resolution by opening that up. And we're going to keep these pitches relatively low. So like I said, just keeping them in a range from like plus 9, 
minus nine, some cases even smaller than that, because that's, it starts to get too extreme after you push those levels, so. And also, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of, um, like I'm starting off really zoomed in, so that the sine waves are really tight, and I will start to slowly zoom out and make the sine waves more spaced apart. Um, Cause that's kind of like what he's saying in the speech and that's the thing that's part of the song as well that like um as time is like speeding up you know like we'll have these sine waves kind of extending and becoming more spaced out like and that i think will give us a really cool kind of like a spongly like type effect on the vocal and of course you know this I'm just this is like a, just a rough draft, so I, I might, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna alter it some some more, um, maybe on or off camera. I haven't decided yet, but um, that way I don't I don't I don't know how boring it's gonna be. I don't know if you guys are into like watching me do this, but like so yeah, I might just go on off cam and uh, and start to alter this a little bit more. But for now, just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm doing, um, this is how it's done. So I decided to affect the voice. So when you hear the final track kind of have an idea of, of you know what what occurred there be like oh man this guy's crazy so as you can see the sine waves are tight at first and then they start to get uh, a little bit more spaced out less narrow and um, we'll do this to the very very end as it extends there I definitely felt like, uh, especially what he's saying, like if you actually listen to the the speech itself, I really, I really felt like it matched the um, the feel of the song. So actually, let me move the looperator here, see if I can make it less less effect heavy, and I want to compress it a little bit just to tighten it up. Lower down this feedback from the echo. All right. Yeah, that sounded that sounded pretty cool. It's definitely matching the uh, feel of the song. Kind of weird times too as well with this quarantine and I think like this matches that as well. So I'm just going to emphasize uh, the echo and the reverb tails right here at the at the breakdown so that you know they really kind of like fade into that breakdown and um, let's see here also I want the pitch to for sure, for sure, at the very, very end where he says, you know, you're just as dead even if you're not. Uh, I want it to pitch down. So you're just as good. Kind of like a turntable stop effect, you know. Right. And he actually says you're just as dead even if you're not killed. But I, I took out killed because it sounds really creepy. It's almost like the kill part echoes. It's like, oh, kill, kill, kill. So I don't know. I might add that back in just because it sounds weird. You're just as dead even if you're not. But for now, I took it out. And um, what I'm going to do as well is add this. Uh, I'm going to. I'm gonna shift the timing of the echo so it kind of like, like kind of like does like a, um, it speeds up from slow to fast kind of as it enters the breakdown there. Um, there you go. Nice. I 
Man, I miss Terrence McKenna. I wonder what he would be saying. Seeing all this stuff nowadays. Shout out to uh, Mr. Dennis McKenna, his brother. Keeping everything alive. Keeping that spirit going. So, yeah, I wanted to uh, definitely include... I definitely wanted to include... Um, that into this um this song you know i like i said he's a big influence on me and then finding out what day it was and you know we did need to fill in some of that middle part anyways so um on the next part i'm definitely gonna add some more guitar and bass hopefully we can figure out a way to um reduce the latency with the video capture software that way i can show you what what's really going on but if not we'll just do like a post analysis I'll, I'll post the stuff up of what i did kind of like similar to the beginning of this part and um just go through what happened so you know when you do hear the final track you can you can know what happened and what was done there and so uh hopefully y'all have been enjoying it thanks for sticking around if you have thus far i hope that you know you've seen something that you've enjoyed maybe you know been entertained at the very least or been able to take some tips home for your own music and um so this uh this next part will be the final part um so if you've been with us this far only one more to go for the completion of it all and you will get the free download at the end of the next one so stay tuned <laughs> <laughs> 